Hey, Cook College Chef Kendra here, and today we are making funnel cakes. Now, this is an American State Fair Festival outdoor event activity thing classic. These are super easy to make. I mean, it's, it's funny, like, when you find out how easy some things are to make, it's kind of mind blowing. It's like, Poof. so let's do what we do. Let's head to the kitchen and make it happen. So, we're going to start off with our dry ingredients. All purpose flour goes in our bowl. Now, we're going to add some salt. Just dump that in. Let's toss in some regular sugar. The last thing for our dry stuff is baking powder. Now I'm going to give it a good mix. Make sure everything gets acquainted. The next thing we're going to do is mix up our wet stuff. Let's add an egg to this measuring cup and get things started by beating it up a little bit. Alright, once that's done, we're going to pour in our water. Our whole milk gets added to the cup. And the last thing is some quality vanilla extract. Now I'm gonna mix this up really well using our trusty fork. It's important to mix the dry ingredients with the dry and the wet ingredients with the wet so we don't over mix things. We don't want these to be super tough. We have our dry ingredients and we have our wet ingredients. Now we're gonna add the dry stuff to the wet stuff and give our funnel cake batter a quick mix with a fork so it doesn't redecorate our kitchen. Then we're gonna mix it with an electric hand mixer just until it's combined. What we have here is a funnel and a squeeze bottle, and this trick makes the process easy, son. We're gonna pour the batter into the squeeze bottle. Now, I've cut the tip off the squeeze bottle to make the opening bigger. You can find these at the dollar store, Walmart, if that's your thing, for about a dollar. We also have a cooling rack ready and a couple of tools to flip these boys. Our oil is close to 375 degrees, and we're gonna pour this batter in like some boss. Now, all we have to do is spread it around, and on top of itself, don't be like yours truly, and get a little wild with it. Once you've got it in there, you're gonna brown it on one side, and then you're gonna flip it and brown it on the other side. That'll take about one to two minutes per side. You know, these will be great for a kid's backyard birthday party or something like that. Kids love this stuff. Let's keep it real, it does love this stuff too. I know I grab one every time I'm at a fair. All right, we're gonna move this to the cooling rack and let it cool down for about a minute. Then using a small strainer, we're going to sprinkle powdered sugar all over these boys, and that's about it. we learn how to make caramel corn. We have our popcorn, brown sugar, baking soda, vanilla, butter, and light corn syrup. We're going to get our brown sugar into our pot and then we're gonna slide in our corn syrup. All right, we're gonna take the time to preheat our oven to 325 degrees. Caramel is one of those things that looks like it's hard to make in a messy type of cleanup, but all you have to do is soak all the stuff you use to make it in hot soapy water and the sugar will melt. Okay. Now I'm gonna add some unsalted butter to the pot and stir the mixture until the butter melts. Then we're gonna let it come to a boil. Once it's boiling, we're gonna let it go for about four minutes. You don't need a candy thermometer for this one. Just let it go without stirring it, guys, and you're good to go. Now I'm gonna drop some popcorn into a large roasting pan. Now turn off the heat. We're gonna add our baking soda and we're going to stir it. Be brave, it's gonna foam up on you. Just keep stirring. Now we're gonna add the vanilla and we're gonna keep stirring that, guys. We want our popcorn right by our side because we wanna really do this process quickly. Now pour the mixture over the popcorn and we're gonna stir. You definitely won't be able to cover all the popcorn this first go around because it starts to harden up on us. But we're not gonna worry about that because we're gonna bake this for 15 minutes and it'd be soft again. So we're just gonna put it into the hot oven and let it go. Stir, it's 
stick it back in the oven for 10 minutes and repeat one or two more times until the caramel is almost crispy. Then you're gonna turn it out on a seal pad or plates, ceramic plates, to cool. That's about it. We're making peach cobbler. We're gonna drain off a couple cans of peaches and then we're gonna add some vanilla and almond extract. The almond extract is optional, guys. Then we're gonna toss in a little cinnamon. Now we're gonna slide in some regular sugar. We're gonna sprinkle it on just like that and give it a good stir. We really want this mixed up well, guys. This makes a lot of juice or a lot of syrup. That's why we drank those peaches off before. On to our batter. We're putting in some all-purpose flour. Now we're gonna add in some sugar. Now we're gonna toss in a little bit of baking powder. Not baking soda, guys, baking powder. That's really important in this. And the final ingredient for the batter is salt. Stir it around a bit. Now we're gonna add an egg. Once the egg is in, we're gonna pour in some whole milk and mix it up well. By the way, the link to this recipe is in the description box below. You're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and grab your baking pan. Now you can do this on one nine by 13, but I did them in two low pans. We're gonna pour some butter I melted in the microwave into the bottom of the pans, just like so. I'm telling you this, this is going to be fantastic with the ice cream I'm making. It also goes really well with just some fresh whipped cream on top. Now we're gonna pour the batter equally into the pans. This is something you don't hear me say much, but you're gonna hear me say it this day. Do not stir this. This batter will rise up over the peaches. It's kind of cool how it happens. Now, gently layer the peaches onto the batter. That's basically all it is to it. We're gonna slide them into the oven. You wanna bake this off for about 45 to 55 minutes. Okay, share this video with your friends. I know my cookaholic friends will love this one, so let's get started. We're adding some cake flour to a large bowl. Then baking powder goes in. Now a little salt. Up next is powdered sugar. Now some regular sugar goes in. We're gonna whisk this to combine. We're also gonna preheat our oven to 320 degrees. Now I'm adding some coconut oil. You can use lard if you want. It's your kitchen, do what you want. Butter won't work here because the flavor will overpower the vanilla. Now an egg goes in. A little water and some vanilla extract. We're gonna stir all this in really well. Hey, the link to this recipe can be found in the about section below. Now we have our dough. We're gonna drop teaspoon size amounts on our baking sheet and flatten it with our fingers to about one and one half inch in diameter. You wanna make sure they're flat because they are wafers and being too puffy will ruin the whole thing. We're gonna slide them in a preheated oven and bake them for eight to 12 minutes. Then we're gonna remove them to a cooling rack. Then we're gonna eat them. Okay, I'm gonna give one a test. Brown on the bottom. They're light because we didn't add anything like honey, but they tasted very much like vanilla wafers, vanilla wafers. Mm, these are gonna be great for my banana pudding. Make your banana pudding from scratch. This is 100% better than any banana pudding you make from a mix. So let's do what we do and make it happen. We have milk, heavy whipping cream, bananas, eggs, Vanilla extract, and I like to use my own. Some delicious homemade vanilla wafers, salt, flour, and sugar. Hey guys, subscribe, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. The first thing you're gonna do is separate the yolks from the whites. You can save the yolks for a meringue, coconut macaroons, egg white omelets if you're into that type of thing. The cool thing is they freeze very well. You wanna get as much of the white out as you can. It's not a deal breaker. If a tiny amount gets in, just do your best. Remember, when a recipe calls for eggs, go with large. Then using a fork, mix the egg mixture well. 
the next thing you're going to do is add the sugar to the mix. Then the salt goes in. The flour. Mix the heck out of this. My mom makes terrific banana pudding. Unfortunately for me, she's a little shaky on how she does it. I should have been watching all those years ago when I was just a hyper little kid, but I was too busy trying to get outside and ride my bike and play with my squad. I'm going to have to go watch her make it and take some notes. But this one right here is freaking amazing. Once it's mixed up pretty good, you might want to switch to a whisk like I did here. This is how it should look. The mix will actually lighten in color. Next, you want to get a medium saucepan over low heat. Now add all of the milk. Half of the cream. Half of the vanilla extract. Now stir this up extremely well. When it comes to a simmer and you see a bit of a bubble, remove it from the heat and let it stand for five minutes. Grab your trusty whisk and whisk it up a couple more times. Whisk the egg mixture into the milk and cream mixture. And return to low heat. Continue to whisk and cook until the mixture starts to thicken up. Once this happens, let it cook for another 30 seconds. You don't want it super thick, but it will thicken up more once it cools, so don't go too far. You need to have a hand strainer at the ready over a medium bowl. Pour the hot mixture into the strainer. Stir and strain your pudding mixture. Mix the rest of the vanilla extract with the rest of the heavy whipping cream and stir into your pudding. You want your bananas to be nice and ripe, but not so close to the edge that the only thing they're good for is sticking them in a blender and making a smoothie. Why? Because you need them firm enough to hold up to the dessert, but ripe enough that their sweetness shines through. You see those brown spots? Guys, that's a sign these boys are just the right amount of ripeness. You peel and you slice a couple bananas thinly and you set them aside. Now, if you're worried about your bananas and your tasty banana pudding turning brown, don't. It's just a natural reaction. It's an enzymatic reaction that happens when banana flesh interact with oxygen. They are perfectly safe to eat. It's going to happen and when you put the pudding in a refrigerator, that's actually gonna speed up the browning. One thing you can do is dip your bananas in fresh lemon juice right before adding to the pudding. This will add a slight lemon and acidic flavor, and if you don't mind that, go for it. Serving right away also helps. I make these lovely cookies from scratch. The link is down below or up in the corner. These are super easy to make, and really, they don't take many ingredients. But I get it. You're making the pudding from scratch and you don't feel like making cookies too. So if you don't feel like it, don't sweat it. Buy some vanilla wafers or chessmen or even some shortbread cookies like Luna Dunes and just use those. Now it's time for you to add a layer of pudding to this dish. Just ladle it on. There really isn't a set way on how to layer a banana pudding. You can layer this thing any way you want. There isn't any wrong way to do it. I like to go pudding, cookies, banana pudding, banana pudding and cookies. Because you know, I'm weird. Now add a layer of the cookies of your choice. Now layer of bananas. If you like the flavor of bananas, 
but don't want actual bananas in your pudding, you can drop some banana extract into the pudding and just skip the bananas. Easy. You just want to add that when you would add the second bit of vanilla extract. Although this isn't from a box, it really is a quick banana pudding recipe. If you're wondering if you should serve the banana pudding warm or cold, that's up to you. It's your kitchen. Do what you want. Some people like it right away when it's made while it's a little warm. I like it warm or cold. It's no right way or wrong way to enjoy your banana pudding. Now I'm just going to finish off this masterpiece, and it truly is, y'all, with this last cookie. All right, I shared the link to the full version of this recipe down below. Making Mexican fried ice cream. So let's do what we do and make it happen. Yo, I'm starting out by pouring some cornflakes in a plastic zip top bag. The glass is holding the bag in place so I don't make a mess. Store brand cornflakes are the way to go if you don't already have cornflakes in your house. They're cheaper and they get the job done. They also have pre crushed crumbs in the baking aisle, but that really crosses the line into complete and utter expensive laziness. But I digress. All right, I'm zipping up the bag and I'm gonna give these boys an old fashioned beat down. Okay, I'm just gonna crush them with my hands. I'm leaving a tiny bit of the bag unzipped so I don't have cornflakes exploding all over the kitchen. You can use a rolling pin to do this also. It's your kitchen, do what you want. I'm mixing some sugar with some cinnamon. People, never trust anyone who isn't down with cinnamon sugar. I love this stuff. My mom, who's fantastic, used to sprinkle it on our butter toast, and yeah, all moms are fantastic. We've got our ice cream chilling in the freezer, honey, cornflake crumbs, and cinnamon sugar. Now we need to fry a tortilla. Mexican fried ice cream is served with a fried tortilla cup sprinkled with cinnamon sugar while it's hot. I'm frying the tortilla in a nonstick pan with a bit of vegetable oil over medium heat. So that trusty glass makes another appearance. This time, I have it on a small plate and flipped over. Here's a small tip. This is how you can make homemade taco shells. Anyway, back to the oil for a crispy finish. I'm going to pull it out of the oil and let the excess drip off. I'm going to place it on a small plate and sprinkle the hot tortilla with some of that cinnamon sugar goodness. This is a baseball size of homemade vanilla ice cream. Uh, okay, maybe it's less than the size of a baseball. I scooped some ice cream in a small ingredients bowl and shaped it into a ball shape with some spoons. I moved it to a piece of parchment paper and wrapped it, then in foil. I placed it in a clean ingredient bowl and put it in the freezer while I worked on all their ingredients. I rolled my ball of ice cream and cinnamon sugar and got some good coverage. Then I dipped the ball into the crushed cornflakes crumbs from before. The trick to this is to heat the ice cream up with your nice clean hands just until it starts to melt a little bit. Then dip it in the cornflake crumbs and the crumbs will stick. I wrap the ball back in the parchment paper and the foil and put it back in the freezer to firm up. This is a necessary step because the ball needs to be hard so it doesn't melt during frying. You know what I mean? I preheated three inches of vegetable oil over medium heat in a pot. I grabbed my ball ice cream back from the freezer and wrapped it. I gently lowered it into the pot with a slider spoon and fried it and rolled it around for two to three seconds on each side. I held it over the pan a few seconds to let the excess oil drip off before I moved it to our waiting fried tortilla. You know, the one with the cinnamon and sugar on it. I drizzled on some honey and I added some whipped topping and finished with the cherry on top. I served it right away. Right away to myself. <laughs> Grab the recipe at chefkendra.weebly.com. You know I got you. Okay, that's all for this week, guys. Share my videos and recipes, and if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Chef Kendra is out. Peace.